All right, hey, welcome to another edition of Chat Wrestling. I am Michael Boyd. Um, just got done watching Monday Night Raw, and let me tell you, for some reason, doesn't matter if I'm watching it live on the DVR. Still feels like I'm watching it forever. Um, my sister and I, you know, she was like almost falling asleep towards the end of it. Um, it's just like not not a lot happens, but then it's, it takes it takes forever to finish. It, that's what it feels like, and it's like I'm watching this shit all fucking day. It feels like a like like a fucking work shift or something. Like it just anyway. So I'm just gonna discuss a few things that I saw tonight. Um, that kind of like stood out to me. Um, from the get go, I was not interested in. Roman Reigns, like, I'm gonna start off with Roman Reigns, okay? Um, I'm not like every other fan who wants to boo Roman every time he comes out and I'm against him, blah, 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 this, that, and the third, but I am kinda against Roman Reigns. He doesn't suck or anything. I'm just tired of seeing him win. That, like, and it's gotten to the point now, like, it's like, you know, you're going against Bray Wyatt and I had no doubt in my mind that, you know, he was going to, you know, win. And it's crazy because I really, you know, I thought that maybe, like, Matt Hardy was going to come out and run interference to get revenge on Bray. You know, Hardy didn't get his revenge on Bray until after the match. Um, Roman just beat Bray clean. Whatever. Like, seriously, whatever. I mean, I still think that Roman Reigns is going to win the Elimination Chamber. Um, the Miz did earn his spot in the Elimination Chamber. He did cut a great promo. He has goals. He wants to be the first ever Universal and Intercontinental Champion. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing The Miz versus Brock Lesnar. I don't know how they're gonna do that, but I mean, The Miz deserves a high profile match at WrestleMania. Will he get it? Probably not. Um, very unlikely. He had a great match with Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews, very talented, very talented guy. I'm, I love Titus Worldwide. I just, I love when they do that, when they uh, come out. They've been watching the slow motion when they did that. Um, so, yeah, like Roman Reigns. I'm just not completely sold on it. Um, so, if you don't know, Jason Jordan is dealing with an injury, and that's why he really hasn't been competing. Um, he was scheduled to team up with Rollins to get a rematch for the last time against the bar, Sheamus and Cesaro. He was unable to compete. Roman Reigns ended up taking his spot later on in the uh, later on in the night. Um, the bar tried to walk out on the match. Jason Jordan ended up being at ringside, and you know he ended up getting into a fight with the bar caused a disqualification costing them the titles and so Seth Rollins was heated backstage going in on uh on Jason Jordan Jason's like hey dad you gonna let me you gonna let him talk to me like that dad and then Kurt just goes off on him telling him you know you gotta go go home stay home until you're ready you know so my thinking is um, Jason Jordan may be off TV for a couple weeks and then you know I mean this may be leading to something with Seth Rollins so my guessing is that it's gonna be Jason Jordan versus Seth Rollins sometime in the future and Jason is gonna cost him you know a match and kick off the feud there I can see a Jason Jordan heel turn coming and Jason Jordan does a great job selling his his character <laughs> he does he does a really good job at that um what's going on with the tag team division you know we have the bar you know and they're gonna go ahead and face who who you know i feel like the tag teams in raw you know on raw they've kind of disappeared a little bit i mean i don't take Heath slater and uh rhino seriously the revival and the valor club they just keep trading wins and but my guessing, it's probably it's gonna be the Bauer Club. I'm just, I mean, it's not. My sister did make a good point because she noticed that Raw they just kind of throw shit together. 
You know, they just have matches for the fuck of it, almost. Like, the storyline just come out of nowhere. You know, there's no, like, real, like, build towards things. Um, um, Bailey took on Asuka, and before the match, she had a conversation with Sasha Banks. Um, Sasha was re-watching, you know, her match with Asuka from last week. Um, Bailey asked her, you know, if you have any tips for, you know, my match, you know, and she said that, you know, Sasha was like, I'm gonna, I love you and all that, but I'm gonna, you know, I'm not gonna tell you, I'm gonna keep this for myself, I wanna be Asuka. And then, they kinda got a little snappy at each other, and I'm, I'm waiting, I told, you know, I told my sister, I was like, listen, it's only a matter of time before Sasha snaps on Bailey. um, and I think a lot of seeds are being planted for that, a Sasha heel turn, or just a little attitude change, and I like it, you know? And the fact that even after the match with uh, Bailey and Asuka, which was phenomenal, Asuka actually shook her hand. How many times have you seen uh, Asuka shake somebody's hand? Very few times, if any. Did Tom Brady shake Nick Foles' hand? Last night at the Super Bowl? No. He did. <laughs> so, I mean, this is a rare sight, you know? Um, and I think that Sasha may feel some type of way about uh, Bailey earning the respect from, you know, from Asuka. So, Sasha may feel some type of way. I mean, it's only a matter of time before they, you know, really, you know, get at each other. Um... So, you know, saying in the women's division, Nia Jax is not in the Elimination Chamber match. It will be Alexa Bliss defending her title against Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, Mickey James, Bailey, and Sasha Banks. Um, I find it a little confusing. There's two members of Absolution in there. Um, Nia Jax is not in there. Nia is going to have, have, have a rematch with Asuka from a couple weeks ago where there wasn't really any clear winner. I'm fine with the match. If Asuka, if Nia Jax wins, she is automatically competing for the Raw Women's Championship. Now, unless there's some, oh, sorry, at WrestleMania, she's competing for the Raw Women's Championship at WrestleMania. She's automatically in the match. I'm not sure, uh, I, I wanna, I, I wanna be hopeful and think that, you know, Nia Jax will be, you know, have her WrestleMania moment. But I don't think that Nia Jax is going to win. And if she does, it may be disqualification, you know, some type of shenanigans or something. I don't know. But I don't think it's, I think something's going to happen where she gets a title shot at Mania. But I don't think, I think that's a bad position to put her in. You know, because there's so much uncertainty. I don't think she's going to break Asuka's streak. Um, she should be in the chamber match. I have no idea why she's not really in the chamber match. Um, speaking of that chamber match, we know we do have the men's chamber match as well. Um, when the winner will go on to face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. The Miz earned his spot. Roman earned his spot. John Cena, Elias, and Braun Strowman. Um, Strowman, Cena, and Elias did have a triple threat match to figure out who was going to come out last in the chamber match. Um, the match was okay. Um, the match ended with Strowman hitting power slam on Cena. Elias pushed Strowman out the ring. And after he tried to hit him with the power slam, but he, you know, pushed him out the ring. And then he pinned Cena. Elias would be coming out last. And then Strowman proceeded to do at least like 50 running power slams. The crowd was tired. You know, the crowd wanted it, but then it was like, all right, this is too much. And I wanted to go to bed pretty much. Um, so that's that. Now, the one thing I do want to talk about here is, um, and we do delve into these topics on um, the, the Pop Radar podcast that's also on this channel. Um, make sure I check it out. Uh, new episode coming very soon. So, Alexa Bliss did come out after Kurt Angle announced the participants for the Women's Olympics Chamber match. And she 
came out and, you know, you thought that, you know, she was going to weasel her way out in the match. And she kind of was, but she was making really good points when she brought up the fact that why is it that her title is on the line in the chamber match, but Brock Lesnar gets to sit at home and his match is a number one contender match. And she went on to accuse, you know, to say that Kurt Angle, this, you know, this is almost, this is sexist. And the only, you know, she made a good point. And then Kurt said, well, you know, Brock defended his title successfully at the Royal Rumble pay-per-view a couple weeks ago. And she hasn't defended her title at all since, you know, TLC in October. Fair point. But then Alexa came back and said, hey. You know, that's not my fault that I haven't defended my title since, you know, October because you're the one that makes the matches. So, you know, and and she did bring up a good point where it is kind of unfair. I mean, I know they're, they're, it's all storyline and stuff, but they are bringing up a good point where it is unfair that she has to defend her title and Brock doesn't. You know, both matches should be title matches. Or both matches should be number one contender matches. You know, it shouldn't be either or. Um, but the main thing that I had an issue with was when you make... I don't know how to say this. When when you bring up... like Her saying, take the part where she said that was sexist to Kurt Angle out. When you just leave it at that, the way Kurt Angle dismissed it, fine. Perfect. Like, whatever. he, Because he asked the crowd, let's see, you know how we're going to solve this? Let's see what the crowd thinks. Do you want to see Alexa Bliss defend her title in the chamber match? And they're all chanting, yes, yes, yes. And he asked them again. They're like, yes, yes, yes. So, you know, that's it. There we have it. Like, match is done. Like, you know. And it just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Like, you know, when in real life, you know, when people bring up you know, sexist, you know, behavior, you know, and, and, and especially in this type of climate that we live in, you know, we have the whole Me Too movement and you have, you know, Time's Up and you have women, you know, accusing men of sexual harassment and, and being women not being paid enough and, and WWE themselves talking about equality and fairness for women and wanting to push the women's division to new heights. They made themselves look stupid by having Kurt Angle completely dismiss her claims. Like, I'm sorry, but, like, that's... I don't want to be that annoying person, I guess, or whatever, but, like, that has to call everything out, but at the same... Like, you... it's It was so obvious. They did not have to do this. And the fact that they brought it up, and then it was kind of cringeworthy. Like, they, it's not... It wasn't a good look. It was not a good move. You know, luckily, I'm pretty sure no one... I haven't seen much on Twitter about this. I haven't seen anyone really complaining about this, but luckily, you know, like hopefully this is blows, you know, you know, blows over. But that that was just hard. Like it was just hard, horrible. Like shame on them for you know who who's writing that shit. You know, like for someone to accuse someone of being sexist, and it's it it, it kind of was. It's really and she made good points. Good logic. And and that's what I noticed too. Like the heels, they always make more sense. They always have like legitimate like gripes to, you know, and to work with and they get nothing. They get nothing in return. Um Ah uh, shit. I had something else to say too. I can't remember what I was gonna say. But Alexa that's a that's a shame. And then Kurt didn't even ask the crowd if they wanted Brock Lesnar to defend this title. If you're going to ask about one, like, actually sit down and listen to her, you know, and this is, you know, I know we have a lot of, you know, situations going on, you know, whether it's like the Enzo situation or whatever, but listen, like, if I had Kurt, this could have been a huge teaching moment for WWE to show that they're really serious about, you know, the women in the company. They could have had Kurt, I hope Alexa does bring this back up next week. I hope she does. I hope, you know, this is, you know, brought to everyone's attention again, you know, because 
I think that should be, you know, like, hey, like, you know, Alexa, hey, I'm sorry that, you know, I was dismissive of your claims and I would like to hear what you really have to say and see how we can resolve this to make this as fair as possible for you. Like, and this is a teaching moment, you know, for the viewers at home, for other people, and to show that, you know, they, they care about the women's division. They care about women in general. You know, they do the breast cancer things. And I know you're not gonna get everything right, but, you know, you still gotta be smarter than this, too. Like, there was no reason for them to do that. And to not favor the woman, I guess, you know? With that logic, she was making really valid points. There was no reason for them to not favor Alexa. And I'm not sure if I said it already, but Corey Graves versus Booker T at WrestleMania. All right. <laughs> Apparently, uh, Booker T is blaming Corey Graves for the reason why he's been kicked off the Raw announced team. From my understanding, Booker T was only supposed to be there. Um, they made a switch between Otunga and Byron from Raw to SmackDown. Otunga wasn't with them yet. He had prior engagements or something, or this may have been around the time with the the whole he was being accused from by Jennifer Hudson of abuse. Um, and I don't think Booker was really supposed to be there long term. And to be fair, Booker T's commentary is not the best. Coach sounds really good. Um, but Corey Graves did make a comment. He said, be careful, coach, or you'll be back to doing local radio or something like that. And that was a shot at Corey. That was a shot at Booker T. Booker T did make comments that he said he wanted to beat him up and wring his little neck. And he can't wait to see him. All this shit, like, you know, all this, you know, shit. Um, and, I mean, it is what it is. I hope Booker's doing well. Corey's doing great on the commentary team. Um, who's right, who's wrong, I don't know. But Corey Graves, Booker T, WrestleMania. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Follow me on Twitter at Michael Mel Boyd. Uh, chat underscore wrestling. Podcast is on iTunes as well. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for more videos. And I am out of here. Oh, and before I forget... Um, have a nice roost day. <laughs>